much uh, for uh, for being invited uh, here. Uh, may I please ask you for uh, for you please uh, in case if uh, my video will stop or something will happen with my voice, uh, just please uh, ping me uh, through the phone or just uh, at this uh, webinar session. Is it okay? Sure, Sergey, I will do that. Okay, thank you much. Uh, good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, my name uh, is Sergey. Uh, I'm really glad uh, that uh, you found uh, some time uh, because uh, actually I hope to have uh, your attention uh, for the next one hour or so. Yes, it will be not less for uh, one hour because uh, we have a quite interesting agenda for today. Actually, I am representing uh, here PTC, and I want to describe uh, for you one of uh, the main PTC product, which is called Creo. That is uh, the mechanical cat, uh, which works uh, quite well for a large mechanical assemblies and uh, many stuff like this uh, mechanical stuff, but uh, it has uh, internal uh, functions uh, which are uh, represented uh, with the special uh, addition to Creo, which is called AFX, like uh, Advanced uh, Framework Design. And when you use uh, this extension uh, together with Creo, you can uh, make uh, any kind of project in case if you have it uh, for the structural uh, framework designs, for steel framework uh, designs, if you are going to have uh, steel framework together with the equipment on the shop floor. So again, Creo is not like the substitution or a competitor to the construction. Uh, like BIM systems, uh, like Bentley or something like this. But that's exactly the tool for having uh, the close integration uh, between your framework steel project and uh, manufacturing process equipment packages, which you place uh, inside your building, for example, or maybe outside in case uh, if you do uh, some uh, work uh, for the service staff, uh, in, if you want to be sure that you can make uh, any kind of services, you can closely, again, integrate. You, make, you, you need to make a close integration between steel framework designs, between manufacturing uh, process equipment packages, between uh, some kind of oil and refinery uh, equipment. And again, if you need all of these together, uh, so, uh, at the end uh, of our session, actually, I want to have like half uh, an hour for our uh, first session, uh, which I will devote completely for the steel framework design, how it can be done in Creo, because I want to show you uh, this process from the first sketch to the end uh, drawing. Just I want you to be fully aware how it is done, what kind of mechanical uh, features inside it, because as a mechanical designer, uh, I do have some special principles of uh, or paradigms of uh, the design, and I will describe it for you uh, during my uh, next uh, half of the of an hour session, and uh, then we will uh, go uh, to your questions because I'm sure you will have a lot of questions. Uh, as far as I'm aware, you are using a lot of uh, constructional CAD software like Autodesk, uh, Bentley, or maybe something else. But again. Uh, I want you uh, to see this in the real project. Uh, and after that, when we have this uh, Q&A session, I believe it will take us maybe uh, five, maybe 10 minutes. I will show you some additional stuff in Creo because in Creo you can do also uh, some kind of engineering or design uh, engineering calculations or simulations like fee, uh, 
uh, finite element uh, modeling also. And I will show you this uh, at the example of CFD analysis. Uh, so with that uh, said, let me start my session. And for the next uh, 30 minutes, uh, actually, I ask your attention. And uh, for the next uh, 30 minutes, we'll be all together in the deep framework steel product. Let me start and explain for you how it work. So now I start my video. Uh, again, uh, if Bindia noticed that uh, something stops here or video is not going, please uh, let me know. Again, what you can see here, you can see uh, the building layout. Uh, let's suppose I have it from one of the constructional cat here. I do have a quite uh, tight or close uh, equipment configuration scheme. So I have an equipment on the floor. I have uh, the stair, which I want to use. And I want to make the additional steel podium, uh, which will uh, be like the next step uh, for the people who are going up to the first level of this stair. Uh, you know, actually, that is a very large assembly because it contains more than 1,000 parts in it. And in Creo, uh, PTC included a special uh, design technique, which is called top-down design. Actually, we are working uh, with the skeleton. But again, we will come uh, to this a bit later. Here, I start uh, to work with my podium. As in any CAD, I will choose some curves or sketches, like we call this in Creo. And then I choose uh, the necessary uh, profile uh, for my beams. So I will have uh, several beams uh, for the podium. And now I am adding this beam uh, while I use this special extension. This special extension you can see at the top level of my screen. That is called Framework. Because again, Creo originally is a mechanical CAD. So here I'm adding uh, some extra lines. Again, this uh, stuff is uh, very similar to... We do have a special uh, principles in Creo, because in Creo we believe that as a mechanical designer, I must have the exact geometry. What am I doing uh, so far? I am just adding uh, beams here, I will uh, do uh, this uh, for the full podium. Again, I have I-beam uh, for the longitudinal directions. After that, I will add some transverse beams or channel beams uh, uh, to have them together. The trick here is that everything that uh, Creo does for you on the screen, on the screen it does for you like you have it in reality. So it's not like the beam representation. So yeah, we do use uh, curves. Uh, we do uh, have some beams, but we will have the true geometry like it will be in reality. For example, now I'm adding uh, this channel beam. In case if it is uh, done, I will have uh, the full geometry together with parameters. What does it mean for you? It means uh, that uh, you will have, again, the geometry like you have it in the real project. If something intersects here, it will be intersects in reality. Like now, for example, I am adding uh, the diagonal uh, beam and you can see on the screen that intersects with, some, uh, with my uh, eye beams. Uh, it will happen in reality. So now my job first is to make uh, joints and then I will add uh, several connectors here, like special uh, steel construction elements. After that, uh, so far I'm adding joints here. After that, I will uh, add some uh, fixes or screws and nuts here. And uh, again, we will see how Creo can work with these uh, connectors. 
because my aim is uh, to have at the end uh, several drawing tables at which I will let you know how many uh, raw material will be used, what kind, what cuts uh, have to be made, have to be uh, made on the manufacturing floor, on the or on the construction side, and in order to have this, I must have the true geometry for that, because everything that uh, we will have on the drawing for the uh, for the orders uh, to our suppliers will be automatically yes automatically calculated based on our design project so far i'm adding uh, joints uh, actually it's not the joints i'm aligning uh, my channel beams uh, with the level of my i beams again i am going to have a podium which will be not alone on the shop floor but it will be integrated together with the stair and it must not uh, intersect either with the stair or with some uh, constructional parts like constructional beams and again it must go uh, slightly just slightly above of my equipment because i want it to have uh, this podium for the service purposes. When I'm adding uh, these um, connectors, you can see how Creo works. I'm placing uh, the right surface for intersections and Creo just make necessary corrections for the beams and uh, it will add, it, it's adding all kinds of these connectors. So it's done uh, by by the creo itself it calculates uh, what kind of geometry you will have at the end and it makes for you the full 3d modeling which is like you have the real podium uh, when people will start to uh, to build it Again, I am choosing uh, special uh, connectors for my diagonal beam from the one side and from the left side, I am doing this uh, again. So uh, it looks like uh, I have everything in terms of the connectors, at least for these uh, diagonal beams and transverse beams. What I am doing right now, uh, in Creo, I am choosing a layer which uh, I have automatically because as Creo, as AFX added these connectors, it's also uh, adding uh, all necessary points for my uh, screws. Uh, what I am choosing here, I am choosing here one point, I am choosing here two surfaces from one side and from the other side. I am choosing from the uh, chosen, uh, sorry, from the uh, library, the necessary uh, screws. Uh, and Creo does for me any other job. So it makes the holes, it places the screws, it places nuts. So all of these are real models. So it's not like their representation. You will see how uh, this stuff can be used afterwards when I go to the drawing and to the bomb management. But so far, just uh, please let me know that all the geometry, all the models uh, were modified. So as far as I placed the screw, Creo made a hole in the both uh, parts. And I have this as a model for the screw and i have parameters like uh, the name and like the labor library specification by the way uh if you have uh, some of your own libraries for uh your uh like your internal enterprise library it's also can be uh inserted and used by creo but actually uh Everything is added in terms of the screws, connectors. Uh, I, I mean, in a major, uh, in a major uh, substance, you, you have it. Again, I'm adding. I'm. I added also some screws and nuts uh, for my 
beam. And now I want to have some additional uh, connectors, which uh, would connect uh, my transverse uh, transverse beams with the longitudinal beams. What am I doing here? I am using the same approach. So I am selecting uh, the right surfaces for the placement. I select uh, the right specification for this joint. And now in, I'm just repeating uh, this uh, connector to the other uh, parts uh, where uh, I need it. Besides that, besides that, uh, in the same way, you may have uh, the weldings in case if uh, they are used in your projects. So far, I'm not using uh, any kind of uh, weldments uh, directly in my podium. Uh, so I will add uh, these uh, connectors uh, for these transverse beams for, or for the channel beams. And then I will go to the connectors uh, to the longitudinal beams because there is something interesting that I want uh, to show you how Creo does it. Again, I need a special connector to connect these uh, longitudinal beams. I select it from the library and I select the exact placement for this. I select uh, some screw size and whole distance information and please notice what Creo did so far it extended the beam up to the right position how it should be in reality. It means then, then I will have on the drawing uh, the cut length table. Creo will calculate all this stuff and it will include it there. That is the advantage uh, of the full 3D model instead of, uh, for example, some kind of uh, geometry re representation for the beams, because everything that you have the here can be and must be used when you go to your manufacturing floor. So it will be used for the calculations of the raw material and for the necessary uh, stock information. So everything will be used from your model. That's the main paradigm behind Creo. First, you do the full 3D model together with parameters. So far, by the way, I am adding here uh, some kind of equipment. So I want to have a ladder. So uh, I place it. And uh, now I will add uh, the cage for this ladder just uh, to make it a bit convenient uh, for the service people who will use it afterwards. So as long as I have it in the 3D model, please make notice on the left uh, side of my screen that everything is added as parts and sub-assemblies also. So I know I'm not just having, for example, uh, this kind of uh, geometry. I have it as a full information object, the, which can be managed afterwards. Because just imagine, so far I'm placing uh, my stair. My stair. I need uh, a datum for this or the plane where I will have my stair. But what's in reality, you will have it. In reality, it will, need, it will not be just the stair, it will be sub-assembly that uh, will be used uh, for all your next uh, steps. Like you will make some drawing or, for example, you will purchase this stair or you will make a manufacturing order in order to make it. So it must be uh, a sub-assembly. It must be placed uh, with some rules in your project. Here you uh, are not like uh, the man who will think about this all the time because all this work is done for you automatically by AFX and Creo. Because uh, when you do a usual mechanical design, for example, uh, reciprocal engine, all of this uh, work is done by a designer. Here, AFX or framework design in Creo does it for you. For example, here I am not really uh, satisfied with the steps length, so I am changing it. And uh, AFX in Creo does or rebuild this model 
automatically. By the way, this procedure is uh, uh, is named uh, in a special way and we call this regeneration. So everything when uh, something is added to the project, re or regenerate it or recalculate all this stuff because uh, again, the main paradigm here is to have the full 3D model like it will be in reality. So if we have to make a cut for the beam, it should be modeled. Uh, you ha you must have intersection uh, between some beams, but you must not have any kind of intersection between, uh, for example, your framework design between this podium and some kind of equipment. So we manage all kind of uh, information like this, because I'm managing the information between podium and equipment through my skeletons and AFX manages all this stuff uh, for me in terms of the intersection that must exist because in order to connect the longitudinal beams together like here you must have the exact length of this and you must have the cut uh, table in order to to make it so far I am adding uh, the rail uh, on my longitudinal uh, eye beam and it seems like I did everything so I am I will not place uh, any plates on top of this uh, but I want to be back on my project and see if it does not intersect with the other parts as you may uh, notice here I am still using skeleton so skeleton is just the floor internal configuration with some necessary stuff so far i am changing the place of my section just to show you this on the right way and my next uh, task here as a podium designer is to be sure that it is aligned uh, with my stair first level so here as you see i do have two different types of beams for the stair it's uh, like analogent uh, small small beams and for my podium I used it uh, in a bit uh, more strength way but I want them to be on the same level that's one of the uh, task for a designer when you do close integration between your steel framework and between your manufacturing equipment because they may be placed in the quiet uh, tough tolerances so here First, I need to check uh, the right distance between the planes. I did it. And everything that I have to do here, I just do the correction of my sizes. Actually, I just uh, placed minus the exact uh, distance difference. If I am a bit paranoid, I can check it afterwards. By the way, I am <laughs> to be to be open. And here, Creo does all correction for you. It means that uh, here I moved to the assembly level, to the full uh, manufacturing floor assembly level. And I have to do a couple of additional stuff here. Besides these uh, planes of the first stair level and my podium, I want them to have the same width. So I'm returning back uh, to my project and on my sketch, which uh, was used from my first step, I am just changing this width. It means that everything, uh, the stairs, uh, the ladder, uh, the beams, the connection places will be changed and uh, they will be uh, fixed automatically. So that's the power of parametric uh, CAT. That's the power of Creo. As long as you placed it uh, on the right way, any kind of changes is done automatically. Uh, so Creo uh, can't be compared with other CATs in terms of the speed of changes, because here you just spent uh, you just spend a couple of seconds for any kind of changes because that is what is PTC calling the true parametric, parametric models. Uh, again, it looks like 
everything is finished here. So we placed, uh, we make, uh, we made uh, a structural uh, framework, framework steel design. Sorry, we placed it here. Everything is placed on the right way and we don't have any kind of intersections by the way in order to exchange this model uh, between uh, for example constructual uh, cat system we do have uh, spatial uh, formats but i will describe uh, these uh, at the end of my presentation so this model uh, again can be exchanged with any part of this so we can exchange only the skeleton or the floor configuration we can exchange only podium itself or we can exchange podium stair equipment uh, and some additional stuff it depends on the task that uh, you perform for the structural design uh, again uh, let me uh, continue with my drawing so uh, what we have done so far we've finished the podium so the podium is placed on the right place so it's aligned uh, appropriately with the equipment with the additional uh, steel framework design now i want to have all kind of manufacturing information for that how can i do it first i will uh, i i'm moving back to my framework and I'm adding all kind of project parameters. What kind of uh, parameters do I mean? I mean all kind of prefixes that uh, will be used uh, for the beams, like parts or assemblies, like uh, PM or assembly stuff. I will uh, add the rule how Clio will uh, make the numbers, what is the start, and after that, Creo changes all kind of internal parameters nothing was changed in terms of geometry but the geometry content uh, was just uh, filled with the right names for the parameters here how you can do a drawing in creo actually if you just remember that everything is done from the model you are on the completely right way of understanding what's happening here so just imagine like you have the model at the behind uh be behind your screen that's the same paradigm that is used in creo for the drawing so i place the view like i see uh the model i can change uh, for example the scale for the view or the stuff like this but i will use this view as uh the initial source because it's not the view that's the model itself the podium model for any kind of bomb information for example <clears throat> here i'm using one of my uh, prepared tables usually that's a good practice like you have some of your uh, tables for the uh, bill of materials for the, for 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 your bomb here i uh, change uh, the width here but actually this table is not right and i'm going to fix it what's necessary here first i do need only parts so i'm not going to uh, count the number of assemblies because i just need the part number the exactly part number how many beams how many plates how many screws and the stuff like this actually in creo everything can be done uh, through this spatial function we call this uh, repeat region actually i'm adding here uh, some script that i need only parts in it and creo shows me only parts in this table so for example i have here uh, my defined prefixes uh, i have here the numbers and if i go to the second drawing here i want to have some bomb balloons for my stair in the stair uh in the stair view i change it to be uh isometric and actually here i want to show you 
uh, how many thoughts you will spend in case of you making some uh, bomb management like like bomb balloons. So far, I am changing again the width of the first uh, table. And then I can go uh, to my uh, properties in order to have some special bomb balloons marks. I am going to the properties and, and here I choose uh, some of my prepared bomb balloons symbols. Uh, Again, I am selecting the model, which is just behind the screen, because I will calculate uh, Creo, to be sure. Uh, we'll calculate uh, all the stuff based on that. And here I uh, add in the bomb balloons by just selecting the table and the view. That's all. Every other stuff uh, is done by Creo. So Creo calculates the right placements for the uh, balloons. It allows me to do some uh, graphical or aesthetical modifications where I shall place all this information. Again, all this information is taken from your 3D model, which means that you have no chance to make a human year here. So you are not just placing the uh, bomb balloons. Creo place it, places uh, this for you. You are just uh, controlling where you have this information. Uh, besides that, what I want to show you is how you can use some special AFX functions for your drawings. For example, uh, I need uh, a detailed view uh, for my first component. You remember, like, uh, I added this uh, at the beginning of my presentation for the uh, some of my legs on this podium. Here, Creo places this, and here we have a special function to make all kind of uh, dimensions here. Again, uh, any kind of uh, these dimensions can be changed. For example, so far, I want also to change uh, the scale uh, for this drawing view. Yes, maybe it's not the best uh, place for this detail view, but uh, for this demo, I, I place it here. So again, everything is taken from your model. So I am not placing the dimension on your model. I have it. I have it inside of the model of this small plate, and I have all kind of manufacturing information, or to be sure, the information that is required for manufacturing drawings also inside the model. So far, I want to have here a stock length table, which is one of the special functions uh, inside AFX. Here, I just click on the view, which represents my model, and I have this table. I am placing this uh, on the convenient uh, on the convenient point on my screen, and here Creo automatically calculates the length and the other stuff of the raw material. Also, I want to have here a cut list. Do you remember the connection, uh, the connector between the longitudinal tables? I want this to be taken. Uh, when I will have a cut list. Again, I am just placing the right model and Creo calculates all this stuff automatically. So you have stock length table, stock uh, length table and the cut list based on your true geometry. So you don't do it manually. Uh, everything that can be calculated by a computer should be calculated by a, by a computer. Mainly, that's it for the structural framework design. Let me please uh, stop sharing my screen and uh, uh, see if you do have some questions. Again, uh, please feel free if uh, you uh, have uh, some questions or maybe you can use uh, your headset uh to to answer to to ask me please don't hesitate uh, to ask your questions friends
Uh, okay. Okay, I can see uh, the first question. Uh, Bangesh. Again, I'm very, very sorry in case if I pronounce your name on the wrong way. Please correct me. Uh, Magesh is uh, asking, will, uh, we will convert, how can we convert 3D model to uh, DVG format? Uh, you know, actually, I have some strong strong adverse position so i'm not like up for this because dvg format uh, dvg format is not the best format for the model because it cannot be changed after afterwards uh, actually we can have dvg as a starting point uh, for our sections in the 3d model in this way, yes, we can we can uh, use it. So again, you may have some, uh, I would say, layouts like uh, those uh, curves that I used at the beginning of my demo in DVG format. We can include them in Creo and we can use them as a starting point for our steel framework design. Okay, uh, next question is coming. Uh, will uh, these FX works for sheets also only steel beams? Yes, it will work. I didn't do it uh, in the demo because I'm a lazy guy. Sorry for that. But actually, you can also add uh, plates. You can also uh, add the sheets. You can add uh, some uh, welding information. And of course, you may have this welding information for your bomb management for your tables uh, on, on on your drawings. On your drawings, feel free to ask any other questions, friends. Uh, okay, can you please explain a little b? Uh, let me please know what I can explain. I will do it with my pleasure. Uh, again, friends, um, <clears throat> so I will be here as long as you can be tolerate with this because I can speak uh, for four hours. I'm not just sure that uh, you can take it. Uh, just please let me know if you have some additional questions here. Ah, okay, AFX uh, features uh, on sheet. You know, actually, what I will do after my webinar, I will send you, uh, all of you, the attendance kit uh, through, uh, through Bindia. So I will ask Binda, uh, I will prepare the attendance kit where I will include all kinds of information how you can uh, make some models, including some uh, features of the sheet design in AFX. And you will have it afterwards as PDF. And uh, also you can use some links, which I will describe for you at the end of my slides. Okay, friends, uh, please, please feel free to ask your questions here. I will be back for sure. Let me just have uh, maybe 10 minutes more of your time uh, for some of the additional stuff that you can do with your designs in Creo. I am just starting to share my screen again. Again, Binda, can you please tell me if you can still see my screen? Yes, Sergey, we can see your screen. Okay, thank you very much. So I'm starting another video in which I want uh, to show you how you can move uh, your models to augmented reality. Uh, probably you heard uh, a lot about this. Maybe you 
hurt nothing but actually one of the quickest way uh, to share your designs with uh, your customers or for example with your uh, peers uh, whom you do work together is the augmented is augmented reality what does it mean for example i have uh, some kind of uh, <clears throat> some kind of big assembly which might be or must be closely integrated uh, with the other stuff uh, here in my example i'm using a couple of uh, mannequins or men's uh, assemblies in order to be sure that one man can see another uh, man or his uh, neighbor in case if they do some work together on the same equipment just because of the uh, safety requirements uh, in order to do this uh, you can for example <clears throat> use some kind of calculation tool you can simulate this you can make some views uh, you can go into your model you can try to imagine uh, how these two guys will see each other in the 3d but the most effective way the most effective way here is to use the augmented reality uh, everything which is placed in Creo can be moved to augmented reality without any kind of disturbance for the designer. So, as long as you have your model in Creo and you have it uh, on the right version, you can, for example, uh, check it in this way. Like, uh, for example, this guy can see the screen. And also, uh, let me please uh, go a bit forward. <coughs> in my video you can place it uh on the special link uh to the external uh thingworks server thingworks that's uh, another product from ptc but again in creo you are not uh, bothering about this because all the stuff you can see here is done for you automatically and uh, ptc will use its own server in order to uh, give you access on your mobile devices or for your peer, uh, for your neighbor, for your friend uh, in other design department on his mobile in order to see everything which is uh, done already. Here I place uh, the mark. We call this just thing walk mark. And that means that if you send this mark to uh to uh to your peer it will print it and the time when he moves his phone uh with the special app for example from the google store app store he can see everything which uh, you did uh, for him actually the intention here is to share all kind of complex engineering information yes you will not share any kind of screw by using this way but it just imagine you place you must check in case if it will be convenient for people for example to be between my podium and the stair or for example that it this podium will not intersect uh, some guy's head in case if uh, he will be a service guy who want uh, to work with this or for example uh, you must make a general impression for your design for your management or your management want to make some report uh, for your customer who uh, ordered you this uh, steel work project what is done here in this place in this case you place your model at the augmented reality you just use uh, uh, the standard link you send this link uh, through your mail here i did it for myself so i send it to my uh, gmail address and i use my phone when you download this app <clears throat> from the google store or your customer does it he just uses uh, this mark it's like uh, the barcode actually the meaning is the same and he can see in his mobile device 
exactly everything which you want to share with him. Again, you will not send this model yourself. You will not exchange it. Nobody will care about how to import DVG or step format or what is the Creo format, how it can be uh, imported, uh, for example, for some contractual cat. So everything is shared through the augmented reality. So you can see this in the right scale. You can see everything like you see it uh, with your own with your own eyes. Again, that's about augmented reality. Let me please just describe for you a couple of additional uh, Creo features like the CFD calculations you can do here also based on your real models. Uh, here I want to have your patience for another 10 minutes. Yes, this will be the final 10 minutes, I promise you. And I want just to describe you my intention as a designer. And I want to show you how you can use your graphic cards and ANSYS technology in case if you work with Creo. So what can you see in front of you? That's the hydraulic tank that I want to check in order, will it work or not? in terms of my internal design features inside it. In Creo, we call this design intent. Design intent is the exactly technology which you want to realize and uh, which you are modeling uh, with the help of CAD system. This uh, hydraulic tank must perform two main functions, just two. It must uh, remove external heat from uh, the uh, oil and it must not allow the oil to be mixed. So uh, the main paradigm for the tank, it must be like a refrigerator for the oil, but the oil shouldn't be like tornado inside it. And here uh, I modeled, uh, actually it wasn't me of course, but uh, I'm I'm taking this part here. I'm uh, I'm modeling a quite complex geometry. And for example, if you make your notice, uh, just take a close look on this uh, bottom part. It's quite expensive. So I want to be sure that it will work. So let me start the true calculation process. Like you will have it in Creo, in case if you will use ANSYS inside Creo, which is also there. Uh, again, that is called like uh, Creo simulation life or special extension in Creo. Uh, here <clears throat> I use ANSYS because it's much more faster to have your simulation results on your graphic cards. In case of Creo, we uh, do use CUDA cards, like NVIDIA CUDA technology. And this card allows you to do the following. Actually, I am just selecting the internal and external stuff for my flow. So I have inlets, I have outlets, and every other stuff is done by Creo. Uh, what is done here? Actually, for this simulation, Creo will extract all kind of these internal fluid domains. It does it, by the way, uh, right now. All this stuff is done by uh, the same uh, CAD core or graphic core, which uh, worked uh, for you when uh, I showed you these uh, beam intersections, when I, where I placed some connections. And uh, ANSYS does all the other stuff for you. So it will calculate. So here I place the oil as the media, as the <clears throat> uh, hydraulic media. I place here uh, the pressure for the internal tubes. Also, I will add uh, a pressure uh, like uh, the atmospheric pressure, which uh, will press uh, all the liquid inside this tank. And of course, I will add the output, 
that's uh, exactly part was uh, the output for uh, <coughs> for the oil actually mainly that's it so i have it i uh, also uh, i am also placing some kind of pressure boundary conditions in the simulation world world boundary conditions that's the exact physical parameters that uh, your design uh, will have in reality and <coughs> Also, I am placing uh, some special conditions uh, as the output pressure. And I start my simulation here. Again, my task here is to be sure, is to be sure that all kind of internal geometry, all kind of complex internal parts will work, will work for me on the right way. So here you can see how Creo simulates this life. Exactly, that's the reason why it's called Creo Simulation Live, because you have not to spend hours, or at most cases, you will not spend hours. Let me please be honest here. When you do CFD calculations, here <clears throat> I want uh, to place some pressures and velocities, because based on the velocities and pressures, I can see clearly, like, I do not have any kind of tornado inside my tank because in case of any kind of tornado this tank will not work uh, so i just want to be sure that it works correctly here i uh, i'm selecting the high pressure and low pressure areas i am uh, selecting uh, these uh, the same stuff for velocities I am changing uh, the scales for the scale for my pressure results. And here, actually, I can see that my internal perforation in these uh, plates is working correctly. So I do have some pressure, uh, I would say, uh, external pressures just inside. But I can see that all my output cavities are working correctly so this design will work and i'm sure in this and again uh one of the advantages of ansys in creo is that that is done very quickly so you can use again your actual 3d model without any kind of simplification because uh, uh it any kind of simplification before simulation would take you many many hours um, maybe some days here you use your design 3d in 3d uh, without any kind of simplification again <clears throat> that's all in terms of my content let me please <clears throat> just have a couple of minutes and uh, i am up for your questions uh, here, what <clears throat> you will have uh, after after this webinar. First, please use these links. Uh, actually, I am strongly uh, recommending you to see the link for FX customer reference, which used uh, for which is for internet page where you can find uh, very cool information about uh, one of our customers. Uh, also, please use these links, uh, especially you can see on the middle of your screen. b and Software is exactly the name of the firm which made AFX for Creo. Uh, again, AFX uh, is an external software which is just integrated in Creo. And b and again, that's the producer's name. Here uh, you can see uh, the link uh, where you can find the data sheet with all kind of information how you can integrate uh, FX, uh, for example, with your constructual CAD. Also, <clears throat> in case if you make a trial account for ptc.com, please see some uh, what's new information what's been added in terms of structural framework design, including some plates and sheets uh, for AFX in the fourth and sixth 
versions. And again, what I will do after my webinar, I will uh, send for you uh, this uh, information, like what's new and AFX. And also, I will send this data sheet with you uh, with the information from B and U uh, software. And uh, the final point here, which I will send uh, for you uh, with Binder help, is another customer reference, which used uh, uh, Creo for uh, structural design. I strongly recommend you to see it because it is, it is cool. It is cool. So with that said, I am all, so I am stopping my speeching and uh, I am back uh, to the chat for your question, friends. Yes, so we are uh, closing this uh, session. Thanks for participating. So we will be sharing the information shortly. Bye.